they should be asking themselves the fundamental question is, since so many people knew, why did no none of these young people who are working on these programs have the confidence to to complain and to raise the issue? And my view is there are three reasons for that. One is the fantastic power of, person, of, of television personalities now who can make and break shows mm -hmm. in a way they couldn't before. The vulnerability of young staff who are on casual, it's a casualized industry. They have very short term contracts. They work exceptionally long hours. They are terrified of not being able to work. And the third thing is that you have the no trade unions effectively of any sort that they can go to. And you have independent companies for whom they work, de for whom they work, who are desperate to keep the commissions with ITV. So you've got a situation of the virtually terrified, powerless young people. They're not going to complain because they're too scared to do so. Mm -hmm. So what people here need to say, not just have you got the processes in place that would detect uh, if people came to you, you've got to ask why are young people not mm -hmm. coming to you? Why do young people? working on these shows feel so powerless, and they do. And Roger, um, it, 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 it was common knowledge, it was talked about openly at ITV in the industry that Philip Scope had been in this inappropriate relationship with uh, a young member of staff. This chief executive is assuring us they asked the right questions and were satisfied with the answers they got. Yes, I'm sure they did from their perspective, but this is partly box ticking. This is a very rich, well-paid group of people, very good in many ways, at the top of the industry, who either don't know, haven't asked or have forgotten what it's like to be at the bottom of the industry. Mm -hmm. If you're 22, 23, actually older than that now, on a short-term contract, sometimes as little as six weeks, you're desperate for the next contract. You're working insane hours as well. There's this immensely powerful personality, TV personality, whom the show and the independent company providing the show or ITV depends. And you are going to actually say something? And mm. um, it's hard enough to exist. You're probably, if you're a young person, paid what they are now. If you, if you don't have the good fortune of being middle class and have your parents living in London, you're probably sleeping on a friend's floor anyway. I, I mean, there's no way they're going to have the, the uh, feel that they can talk about these issues. And, and I think for, the, for an industry to ignore the fundamental insecurities and imbalance of power is wrong. I think Dame, Dame Karen is an exceptionally good chief executive, but it won't be enough for them just to say, our policies were in place, nobody complained. They must go to the next point is, why are so many young people scared of complaining? And what can the industry do but what, to make what, this more, to, to reinforce, if you like, their ability to speak out when these colossal imbalances of power exist? I guess, Roger, I, I, I'm fascinated by what you've just said there, because um, I think you've hit the nail on the head. The question is, what could possibly fix that imbalance of power? Twas ever thus. You have a highly paid public figure, incredibly famous, and as you say, somebody that might be straight out of college, uh, very disempowered in that environment. How do you fix that? It's inevitable, isn't well, it? It? Wasn't, it wasn't ever thus. I mean, people, you know, I, mean, I don't want to talk about the past. There are lots of things about the past, and we know from, you know, what's been revealed, me too, lots of things went on. Mm. But fundamentally, if you worked in an organization where you had a decent long-term contract, mm. you were more likely to be able to speak out. If you were in an industry which had trade unions, they got too powerful at one stage, and trade unions you could talk to, who could represent you properly, you had a little more safeguarding there. And if you had an industry which was more honest now about how independent producers are almost totally dependent producers and vulnerable in that way. Collectively, we've got to be more honest about this as an industry. It's difficult. You can't go back in many ways to what existed, but you could look at minimal contract lengths. You could look at uh, safeguarding uh, at, 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 at a much lower level. You could empower the trade unions, not in terms of industrial power, but in terms of issues like this, strengthen their ability. You know, most people won't belong to trade unions. Um, there's nothing concerning the independence. But there just needs to be an honest listening to young people and the reality of their lives and what needs to be done. To, we are back in a casualized industry, which in some ways is akin to that, you know, that existed in the Victorian period. Now, I was an independent producer, um, and I know how tough it is to survive. And you can't, you know, you've got to contract, expand, contract, expand, and, and so on. I, I, I've 
to mortgage my house at one occasion. I'm not pretending it's easy in these circumstances. But the starting point is to recognize there's, there's such an imbalance of power that it is unreasonable to expect young people in these circumstances to say anything. So you've got to police the presenters much more closely, but you've got to find ways of enhancing the ability of young people to speak out. And Roger, you, the, the, the culture you describe, the executives who run ITV know it, they live it, they see it, and they must have, must have surely suspected that there was a, a wall of silence because so many people feared for their jobs. And I note that Dame Carolyn McCall now says it wasn't an investigation, it was an ongoing review. Well, I think that large parts of the industry are in denial. I mean, when we went back to a situation where, where independents were introduced as a result essentially of Channel 4, um, you know, it was mainly because there were loads of people who wanted to work in different ways, lots of ideas, and also people wanted to break what they saw as a sort of not quite monopoly between ITV and BBC. We, we needed a range of different voices. That was very good. What transpired very quickly, accidentally, was a number of people, mainly in the entertainment area in independent countries, got very rich, and they got rich partly because they cut costs. They didn't have to have permanent staff. They could recruit from a floating group of people. BBC and ITV cut costs because they simply said, we're going to put this program out. This is the price. If you don't want to make it, somebody else will. They didn't have, in other words, the problems they would have with internal producing within their own organizations where they had wage agreements, people on long contracts mm. and so on. It's a way of cutting costs. So you so, had this mass cutting mm. of costs you had independent producers either struggling survival or making lots of money. Yeah. And in between, you have these young people not getting a great deal of training, desperate, perhaps starstruck in the industry, receiving little protection. I think the industry as a whole has turned a blind eye to that. It's inconvenient. Roger. And I'm sure Dame Caroline thinks she's doing the proper thing and she's a good person. Mm -hmm. but Roger, it's, 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 it's 